down, Kamali, taking you through some of the things people are talking about and some of the stuff they're sharing around the world on Newsfeed Today. Are these the biggest mass protests in history? Millions march around the world to try and save the planet. Genetically modified mosquitoes in Brazil didn't quite come out with the results scientists expected. How many times has Justin Trudeau worn blackface makeup? Not even he can tell you. And video of an overexcited dog is an excellent way to get into the weekend. And to top of our news feed, the climate crisis. There is a huge day of action being held. Millions of people all over the world have skipped school and walked off their jobs to demonstrate. They're using their voices to call on governments to do more, much more, to deal with the climate crisis. Here's Liz. World leaders have promised climate action before. And this week, the man in charge at the UN admitted they're failing. We are losing the race against climate change. Our world is off track in meeting the Sustainable Development Goals. We are not drowning! For millions of young people around the world, that's simply unacceptable. They're taking to the streets in the biggest day of climate demonstrations in the planet's history. In Australia, Asia, Europe, Africa, North America, South America, every corner of the world. The new face of climate activism is young and angry. We are on the outskirts of the biggest catastrophe humanity has ever faced and our government is doing nothing. We depend mostly on the global leaders who aren't doing much of what we expect and therefore this is the kind of strike we need to proclaim our voice. So I don't think anyone needs a reason to be in this strike right now. This is for your future, this is for your existence, and this is for your life. If you're not here, you're wasting your time wherever you are in the world right now. It all started just over a year ago when one 15-year-old Swedish girl staged a one-person school strike. Greta Thunberg's message is clear. For way too long, the politicians and the people in power have gotten away with not doing anything to fight the climate crisis but we will make sure that they will not get away with it any longer. We will continue to school strike until they do something. The climate activist's very public fight spurred many young people to join her. So I think everyone says that it's all about the collective and stuff like that, but at the same time, to, uh, one inspiring figure has got to be Greta Thunberg, the one who basically started this entire movement. Activists are hoping by keeping pressure on decision makers, the climate crisis will stay top of the world's agenda. There are signs that it's working. Just days ago, the boss of the world's most valuable public company promised to make Amazon carbon neutral and meet the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement by 2040. Single-use plastics are starting to disappear in nations all over the planet. And more than 250 news outlets across the world have agreed to strengthen coverage of the climate story. Friday's climate strikes kick off a big week for environmental activism with a major climate action summit at the UN next week. Yeah, I think this UN summit needs to be some kind of breaking point, tipping point, where people start to realise what is actually going on. and. Um, so we have high expectations in you too, and all member states to, to deliver. And uh, we are going to try to do our part to make sure that they have all eyes on them and they have really the pressure on them so they cannot continue to ignore it. We skipped school for this. We're missing our education. The Politicians are on notice. The young activists have time and energy, and they're not going away. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other things that caught our eye on social media. 
And this is generating buzz in Turkey. Beekeepers in the city of Van held prayers to give thanks for a very good harvest of honey. But the bees were not happy with something and instead of taking part, decided to swarm the gather group, scattering the guys who had to run for cover to avoid being stung. <laughs> President Duterte of the Philippines has had yet another speech bugged, this time by a gecko, adding a hat trick to his litany of public talking engagements where he's been upstage by some small creature. Earlier this year, a cockroach crawled up his body. Ah, there it is there. And in July, a fly landed on his forehead. Now, these things keep happening during speeches where he's saying things that are controversial, which may or may not be a coincidence. An historic rivalry. The entire rugby world has held its collective breath in anticipation of this moment. Well, the Rugby World Cup is trending and it's begun in Japan. The opening game was Japan and Russia, which Japan won easily. But tomorrow will bring arguably the biggest rivalry in rugby, or so my editor Louis says. South Africa versus New Zealand. You can get more from TRT's very own Springbok, Lance Santos, who is in Japan watching all the games. We'll be on Beyond the Game later. And next, science is always trying to find ways to make the world better. And one very well-intentioned experiment aimed at reducing the risks mosquitoes pose to humans seems to have backfired. They used genetics to try and modify a species and ended up creating an entirely new one. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, but are there any risks to humans? <laughs> the experiment may not have worked exactly as designed, but that's not really the end of the world. Science will endeavour to find a way. Earlier, I spoke to infectious disease expert Dr Oliver Brady, who addressed whether the new breed of mosquito is a danger to humans. There's definitely no evidence of that. I, I don't think many in the scientific community are, are worried about that uh, transfer of genes from mosquitoes to humans. That's, that's um, yeah, there's certainly no evidence of that. I think the, the bigger concern is, is how mosquito populations will interact. So currently there's a, there's a big evidence gap in knowing in essentially insecticide resistance of mosquito species. So insecticides are currently our best and, and, and really only tool to, to try and control these mosquito populations. Only over time these mosquitoes um, evolve resistance to the insecticides we use. And because we're using different insecticides in lots of different places, um, the resistance that evolves is, is slightly different in different areas. Um, I think the real worry is that if we start mixing mosquito populations at an even higher rate, um, we'll have mosquitoes that are resistant to multiple classes of insecticides, which really leaves us with um, no new tools to uh, fight a growing disease risk. This particular study um, shows a very specific thing, and that's the, the mosquito that they release is essentially genetically different to the one that was present in the part of Brazil that they were doing. And after the release program, there were some elements of the genome of the released mosquito found in the natural population. So there's definitely no evidence that this has made the, the mosquito population in this part of Brazil any more um, sort of risky for disease. Um, 
that's just not really shown. I mean, there's, there's definitely some concern about any kind of modification of the background genetics of um, a mosquito population, but these kind of things happen all the time. So, particularly the, the species of mosquito that transmits dengue, Aedes aegypti, is a highly mobile mosquito species. So it can move all around the world. It can lay its eggs in things like shipping containers that get spread around the world very, very quickly. So it's not unusual that we see um, different genetic backgrounds combine and mix all the time. Okay, let's spin around the world now for some other stories you need to know this Friday. Football's international governing body, FIFA, have called on Iran to allow women to watch live football matches in stadiums. Women in the Republic are banned from doing so currently. Earlier this month, the death of a woman who became known as the Blue Girl brought the issue to international attention again. She entered the stadium in disguise. She was then facing prison time for doing so and took her own life. Her story was spread widely on social media. Amnesty International have issued a report where they claim the police in Hong Kong used torture against demonstrators during the three months of protest. The police deny they behaved outside legal law enforcement practice. Now, people in Hong Kong have been demonstrating over a now scrapped plan to allow criminals to be extradited to mainland China. They're now demanding investigations into how the police have dealt with the protests. Twitter has added a new feature for users in a couple of locations from today. The ability to hide a reply to a tweet is designed to stop the amplification of bullying behavior on the site. The new tool will be available in the US, Japan and Canada. And Canadian scientists say pesticides used against mosquitoes may be blamed for making diplomats unwell in Cuba. Dozens of people at both the Canadian and US embassy in embassies in Havana complained of dizziness, nausea, and in some cases, hearing loss a couple of years ago. US media suggested it was caused by a secret sonic weapon, something denied by the Cubans and dismissed by the Canadians. They now say neurotoxins, which people could have been exposed to while buildings were being fumigated, could be to blame. The weapons company Colt have announced they will stop producing rifles for the civilian market. Colt make the AR-15, the weapon which has been used in some mass shooting incidents recently. Colt say they are enough, there are enough of them out there right now, so they don't need to make any more. There are reportedly 390 million guns in America and 330 million people live there. There have been 9,000 gun-related deaths so far in 2019. And now something you can't have failed to miss, the spectacular slow motion free fall that is the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau at the moment. He's apologizing that we know he used blackface makeup several times in the past. Just how many times is the question? Earlier today, you were questioned about how many times you have appeared in blackface or brownface. I'll make it easy. Is it possible to round to the nearest five? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make light of the situation. I don't think it's something that we should be making light of. Uh, I think far too many people in this country uh, face uh, discrimination and intolerance on a daily basis. Uh, and what I did um, was inexcusable and wrong and hurt a lot of people who considered me to be an ally. Uh, and that is wrong. And I am deeply, deeply sorry. There is no, um, no way to sugarcoat it. It was something that I uh, did wrong. And I take responsibility for it. Uh, and I'm, sir, um, as we move forward as a country, as I move forward uh, and continue to try and continue to fight against uh, intolerance and racism uh, with my actions, I also take responsibility for the fact uh, that uh, I lacked respect towards people who uh, already face tremendous discrimination, and that is something that I apologize for. Thank you. And last up, some Friday fun courtesy of Twitter and some viral video. Well, this is a very excited dog waiting for its owner. We can only assume and do an immensely cute little two-step, and then you'll see a little hoppy thing too. And everyone's adding their own means saying, it's me when. I guess it would be me when the pizza man rings the doorbell. Those little legs. 
And that is all from the Newsfeed team. Reach out to me with your questions, comments, complaints, and suggestions. You'll find me at Kamali Melbourne. You'll find us 24 seven on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and follow me on Twitter. Follow, subscribe, and add. See you again soon.